here we are a couple years later and I'm back in the working uh, workforce again and working my way out of that hole that I was in. Uh, but again, it's still a situation that's always in the back of your mind. You, you, once you've been there, once you've been homeless, you can never turn a blind eye to it. You, 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 you have to look at people and understand that for various reasons, homelessness is not just somebody, nobody wants to be homeless is the case. So uh, it's often we need to step out on faith and step out and see what we can do to help somebody who is less fortunate than us. And prior to me being homeless, you know, I would donate my little dollar to the United Way on the payroll thing. And, but it's a lot bigger than that because it can happen to you. I mean, you know, I'm not saying that it's going to happen, but you never know what circumstances will happen to a family that will cause you to have to live in your car, live on the street, live in a park, live in a tent, going to different places, churches and organizations uh, because you don't have money to, to buy food or anything like that. So uh, it's, it's, it's something that we need to be aware of. Yes, sir. Well, uh, technically, I would say about a year uh, until I went into my own living situation. But I was never, I, I was fortunate enough, I never had to sleep in the street. Uh, which is, but, but I still did not have a place to call home. I was living in a house with uh, nine other gentlemen. Yes. Uh, like Curtis said, there, there are various organizations and agencies that will provide food for you. You just have to know where to look and where to go. Yes. Uh, yes, my parents have passed away a long time ago, so uh, it's just me. I have two older children, but one's in Texas and the other's in Washington, D.C. I stayed in a transitional house uh, in West Atlanta on West Lake. Uh, do people know what a transitional house is? Do, do, you, do you know what a transition? A, a, a transitional house, if I can explain yeah. it to you, is a place where um, you have people come to stay until they can get their living situation straight. It's it's a temporary living arrangement. It's not meant to be permanent. Is a shelter considered? No. A trans transitional housing is a place where you go and you actually have a, what you call a case manager, which is like a social worker that will work with, with every person that's living in transitional housing. So they'll help them get the things that they need so that they can get out of homelessness. So they stay in a, it's, they don't have their own place. So oftentimes in transitional housing, you'll be sharing a big room with 20 different people, or you'll be sharing a tiny room with one other person. It just, they all look different, but, um, but you're not, you're, you're kind of squished together pretty good, like at camp, like a summer camp, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> summer camp without yeah. all the trees and stuff. Yeah, without all the fun, without all, without all the swimming and the canoeing, yeah. And, um, and so a case manager will help you get things, like some people don't have their driver's license, or, um, or they, don't, they don't have their social security card. But there are all kinds of things that people need to get in order to be able to apply for an apartment and get into their own apartment again. So that's what the case manager does in transitional housing. For a shelter, people just go and stay the night. Uh, yeah, I was very scared. Uh, when I left the hospital to go to the transitional house, I did not know what to expect. Uh, and it, all my fears were realized when I walked through that door. Uh, when you're used to having your own bedroom and you're used to having your own kitchen and your own bathroom and to have to share that with nine other people that you don't know, uh, it, it can be quite frightening, yes. Yes, sir. Um, 
everybody has unique personalities and everybody had their own issues that they were dealing with at the time. For the most part, I would say yes. The people were all in a similar circumstance, so we all had to kind of bond together and help each other out as much as we could. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, did, um, did you make friends at the transitional house? I did. I, I made friends at the transitional house. You get to know people that you live so close to. Uh, and uh, I have the type of personality, well, I, I like people, so. You know, I use that gift that God has given me to, to just be a blessing to other people. Uh, I, I don't see most of them, no. Uh, there is one gentleman that uh, actually I see quite often uh, who has also managed to work himself into a better circumstance, situation. Are you stressed out? Yes, ma'am. Uh, I can't really speak on what's being donated, but yes, that, that is the whole purpose. Businesses to donate to the United Way to assist people in need. Yes. You were both in the military, is that right? That's correct. How long were each of you in the military? I, I spent almost nine years in. And I grew up seven. 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 But also, you want to talk a little bit? You had very different experiences, yeah, right. right? In terms of seeing conflict in the all right, um, we're back to me. Yeah. Uh, no, no, actually. First time I ever met. <laughs> oh, okay, now, me and Les had two different jobs. I was more into a uh, combat zone, and uh, I've seen a lot of different things. I've seen. No, uh, men that uh, we were just like a team. We were a team. We were just trying to survive and make it through. Um, but you were in a combat. Zone. Oh yes, uh, I was in the combat zone. And also, you all know what that means to be in a combat zone. Okay, what a combat zone is? That's where you're fighting in the zone, where you're fighting another person, um, shooting back at each other, and um, just trying to survive out there in the jungle. Like, it, the war that I fought in during Vietnam is a lot different than the war they have here um, in Afghanistan, because Afghanistan, their war is, um, uh, they're more like a rural, rural area where they're fighting from homes, which is a lot harder than fighting in the jungle. Because the jungle, you got something you're gonna get behind right away. Uh, this new war they have now is just like we're sitting in here, but you can be up in the windows. And uh, you can start sharp shooting on people. Or you can set uh, bombs and stuff. So it's, uh, the guys that are coming home now, yeah, it's a little, they're a little more rougher uh, on the edges. I've met, I've had a chance to meet quite a few of them since I've uh, started working for United Way. Because at United Way, I'm that person who Kelly was talking about. I'm the person that goes around and takes the guys to get their IDs, their social security number. Um, I take them to uh, what is called the Brady Health Center which is uh, where they get an assessment. And what assessment is, they evaluate uh, the person's mental health. Uh, also, I also uh, take them to a, uh, I take them where we got a man, like he's saying, transitional housing. Uh, I cover Douglas and Cobb uh, County. So I'm in between. I used to cover Atlanta, but they have a different team now. So I'm on the road most of the time now. So I'm back between Douglas, Atlanta, and Cobb County. 
Can you talk a little bit about the appointments at Grady's and how, how um, what that's like getting an appointment for? And do you guys know what mental health, a mental health evaluation is? adjusting from being in a combat zone or being in a military situation to being at home. And it's like there's their their it's like their their brain, their body and their mind hasn't left the war. So they have a hard time functioning normally. They have a hard time do, going to work, going to sleep, being nice to people. And and that's a that's a result of being in a war. That can be a result of being in a war. And what they need is they need doctors and people who know how to talk to them and get them the medication they need. So that's so Curtis takes them to Grady so that they can get the help that they need so that they can be in the world just like we are. All right, and also Do you have trouble going to sleep? Yes. I I have uh, I have post stress syndrome. Yes. I you know have that is, bad nightmares. PTSD is what I was just describing, where you you left the war and you come home, but you can't get the war out of your mind, right? So you can't go to sleep at night, for example. I have to have medication to uh, so I can sleep. I've been told I fight in my sleep. Uh, I act out as if I'm still in the war. I uh, hear things. I talk. So I'm probably not a good person to be around when right? you're trying to get some sleep. <laughs> yes. How many hours did you get to go to sleep? I don't even know. It takes me a minute. I mean, I can go to bed at 9, and maybe I'll go to sleep about 11, 30, 12. But that's only with medication. Can I, I want to... Just so that there's one thing I also want you all to talk about, which is what do we need to ask Mayor G for? What help do you all need? What help the homeless vets need? And what should we write to Mayor Reed asking them for? Well, would you would you talk to them about, tell them about that? Oh, you want me to tell yes, you? yes, both of you. Okay, I'll, what I'm going to tell you now is, yeah, you need to talk to the mayor here, <laughs> say something to him because. What I was telling you about that Brady uh, Health Center, where I have to take people, they're very slow. Uh, we try to go in and get an appointment. It might be three, four months before we can even get in to get our clients to see somebody about getting their medication. Um, the Brady system needs to be updated a lot more because there's a lot of veterans out here now. I mean, not just the Vietnam veterans. Now you got the Afghanistan, and the Iraqi war, and everything. Those guys are coming home, so they need a system that's set up that us vets can go to and get evaluated more quickly because we're easier to work with when we're on our medication. We're not on medication. Uh, <coughs> We had a, a fear of people and stuff like that. Uh, we try to control some of our stuff. You know, I have anger at times. Even I get mad because uh, my clients can't get seen for three or four months. And they need medication now. And Leslie, what do you think in terms of what should, what should we ask a mayor for? Uh, money. Money. <laughs> 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 For what? <laughs> Money is secure, all right. You know. um, there, we need more resources out there. Like Curtis was saying, uh, uh, you know, time uh, is something that a lot of people, you know, don't have because of their mental challenges and things like that. And if it takes three, six months to get an appointment, uh, you don't know what can happen in that time frame or what that person may do because they did not get the assistance that they needed in, in the time frame that was 
required for them. So resources, money is always a good thing. Uh, housing assistance, if you look around, I don't know how many people see abandoned houses when they go to that Get some of those houses fixed up to, to house uh, the veterans or house homeless people uh, or, you know, mothers and daughters and children and things like that. So uh, those are the things that I think are very important. The resources, the houses that are abandoned out here that are not being used for anything can be used to house uh, homeless people uh, and things like that. Uh, yes. She's a real estate worker. <laughs> yes, sir. I was a grunt. I was in the army. And what about you? I was in the infantry queen of battle. Yes, uh, uh, I'm going to go here, through here, through here. Yes. Uh, the type of job that I had was a little different than Curtis. I was more of a command a soldier, meaning behind the front lines. Uh, in, an so, uh, in, in an office. In an office. I did what they call communications, satellite communications and signals. So I set up the communications so these guys can communicate with each other out in the field. Uh, I do. I know the type of job that Curtis did, and I envy people. Well, no, I'm not going to. That's not a good word. I do not envy people like Curtis. Uh, I, it's not the type of job for me. Uh, just to be quite blunt, Curtis had a gun, <laughs> and Curtis would shoot back at people that shot at him. So, yes, sir. Well, Curtis was up front attacking and being attacked, and I was in the back uh, trying to keep my head down like this so nobody would shoot at me. <laughs> were, you, were you abroad? You were I was. I, I spent time in Iraq, Afghanistan, Korea, uh, as well as Thailand and certain other places. Yes. We were in the Army together, but we served in different job fields. Yes. Does the military not help you anymore? Not uh, the, the Veterans Administration had resources to help homeless veterans, uh -huh. uh, disabled veterans, and so forth. The challenge is, is there's so many veterans, right. and there are not a lot of people, there are not a lot of jobs out there that uh, are, are filled to help us. So there's a delay in getting the help that you need. So. If you have two million veterans and, and uh, not a, enough resources to service all of them in a, a particular period of time, then again, the delay comes in time. Yes. So that's what you can ask for. The, that's what I was saying about the resources, getting more people involved to help, whether it be on a volunteer basis or uh, you know, some type of paid position. Yes. Well, see, that's the difference in, in the war that Curtis fought and I fought. They knew they were fighting the Viet Vietnamese. Uh, even though I, I was in a command center, uh, we could not leave the compound because we just didn't know who we were fighting. Uh, I, quite honestly, little children like you may come up to you asking for, you know, put their hand out or something and be strapped and have a bomb around them and, and, and we'll quite frankly kill you. I don't want to try to really scare you, but that's how it was. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I believe there's a law in place that you're supposed to. Uh, I'm not sure how that works out in this economy, uh, but uh, yeah, that, that's supposed to be in place. Uh, it, it does not seem like it, you know, they could say through, you know, economy, we're letting you go. Yes, ma'am. 
I was uh, 21 years old. Oh, I was 18. And how long were you Seven Can you also talk, I remember talking before about, well, it's, it's related to what you were saying, but about how important it is to have a support in the What is the support that veterans, homeless veterans, homeless people? I mean, some of it might be already said, but. Just talking about support that we need as veterans, uh, the biggest thing that we need is somebody to communicate with. Somebody to provide us the information that we need to seek out the help that we may require. So those type of resources are very important where if we can pick up the phone and call, say, the Veterans Administration and say, this is what the problem I'm faced with. Uh, where direction can you point me into to get the help that I need? Uh, whether it be for homeless or substance abuse or, you know, needing food or transportation or medical care. Do yes, people know what substance abuse is? Do you, well, say, do you want to say? Uh, substance abuse uh, is when a person uses a drug uh, that's not prescribed by their doctor, or could be prescribed by their doctor, but they're using it for the wrong reasons. Uh, or alcohol. Or alcohol, yes. Yes, ma'am. Uh, no, it's been a couple, a few years for me, but I still have friends that are returning now. Great, so you hold it. Yeah. Other people in okay. Mira, and then we'll start here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, from my situation, I'm going to say no. Uh, I don't really have any family here in the Atlanta area, uh, being from Philadelphia and Washington, D.C., and pride came into play for me where I didn't want to let anybody know uh, what was going on because I was always the one that was able to, to get things done. So you didn't ask for help? No, I didn't ask for help, yes. Oh, we need her. <laughs> cool. Yes, sir. Was it scary living on the streets? Well, like I said, I never actually lived on the street. Um, but I'm going to let Curtis talk about that. Uh, yes, it's scary. Um, like me, I used to sleep at a, right in front of a church called Central Presbyterian. Uh, right across from the Capitol building, and you sleep on the little stairs. That's where my size comes in. But I used to sleep on the steps. And it's scary at first, but after a while, one thing I've learned about with the homeless, being homeless, are that they're a very tight community. Um, there's nobody going to come and bother you without a whole crowd getting up, finding out what's going on. Uh, the communications with the homeless is very good. If you're just getting out there on the streets or something, there's somebody always that can direct you somewhere to go eat. Well, the ones that were mean were people who hadn't been on their medication or not taking their medication. But most of the people who are out there, you don't have to be afraid of, uh, you know. Uh, some people may look or smell a certain way. It's because those people have mental health issues and uh, they, don't, they don't know how to take care of themselves. So we have to uh, try to find places for them to uh, go so we can... Uh, Get them straight. Get, like I said, your Grady Health System here needs to be able to react a little quicker than they do because a lot of the people that are out here on the streets may not have had their medications for about a year, and uh, a lot of them don't know what they're doing. But there's a lot of people out there, they're real nice. I mean, they're, uh, if you ask them something, they'll tell you. But, you know, it's... You never approach everybody, though. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know. Can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. When you were homeless, like if somebody like myself or anybody walked by, what was, what meant the most to you? Just somebody's talking to me okay. or uh, just mostly it was just talking to you. You know, it's uh, communications between humans is very, is very important. Especially for somebody like me, like I said, for what I have. Uh, just for me to just hear somebody's voice, because a lot of times in my mind, I'll go back into a flashback if it's too quiet. So I always uh, kept on the go, and uh, I have a passion to uh, survive. And another thing is I also have a very high compassion to helping all the people that are homeless because I've been there. God's blessed me to be able to turn around and take people where they need to go. And through them and the United Way is how I can uh, give back to the rest of the veterans. Because it's the veterans, anybody, it's Army, Navy, Marines, we're all brothers. we all been there. And uh, and ask sisters. Oh, yeah, and the sisters, yes. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> but, uh... I want to... I, I think I'm going to get ready to wrap it up so you all have some outdoor time today. Unless I'm going to just call on... Let's call on people who haven't spoken yet who want to add something. So that would be Nira. Is that okay? Yes. Do you have to leave the military after a certain time? No, you can go all the way up to 20 years. I was going to do 20 years, but I had to get out and raise my... Uh, daughter who was four at that time. And then Just do like one more. Yeah, Bennett, did you have a question? Yeah. Okay. Do homeless people like do they ever have enough because I see homeless people with music and a hat trying to get money um, like that and I actually know a better way but I forgot but They, they probably use both, whatever is convenient. Can I, so I think we're going to wrap it up. Yeah. But the one thing I did want to say, or one thought that I had, and if you all have any final thoughts, but put your hands down, guys, is that Kelly just said that there are probably, there's somewhere between 1,200 and 1,300 homeless veterans in Atlanta. Wow. Now, that does seem like a lot, but I also know this is something that Crook Keep says sometimes, but if you think about how many seem like it's, it's a problem that we should be able to solve. And that's why we're writing to Mayor Reed, right? And Mayor Reed has done a lot of good things, but we want to keep on pushing him. Yeah, because he needs a little push. He needs a little push. That's what we're going to so, do. So, uh, whatever you put in there, tell him to uh, pep it up. <laughs> Especially, like I said, that uh, great <coughs> mental health, don't forget that. Uh -huh. Make sure you let him know that uh, their services need to be a little bit more uh, speedy. Yeah. Speedy. Leslie, do you have a last, any last thoughts? Uh, I just want to say thank you for allowing me to come talk with you guys. Uh, it's been an experience for me with your questions and everything. Uh, I, I look forward to seeing the type of letters that you write to the mayor. Uh, and, and just make sure that you emphasize that the help is required and uh, it does do some good. Your letters will do some good. So just think about what you're going to write and uh, I look forward to seeing it. Thank you all. God bless you. Thank you.